Well, hey folks, this is John with those Ox Backroads with you. We're back in the uh, World Headquarters garage today. We've got the mighty uh, CF Moto or Ibex 800T up on the chopping block today. In our previous video on this bike, we uh, pulled all the covers off of it. We had the tank off, pulled the spark plugs, uh, checked those, and just kind of looked it all over, checked all of our hoses. I'll put a link in the description below for that video if you want to see that and you haven't seen it. So today, before I uh, put all the skins back on this bike, I'm going to go ahead and service the steering head bearings here in our steering head. Uh, it's a lot easier to get to when the, when the cover isn't up here around. It kind of goes around the, uh, the steering head. It'll just be a lot easier to do right now with those off and I, I won't have any chance of the handlebars uh, skinning up my, uh, my cover around the gas tank uh, with it off. If you look at the uh, manual on servicing steering head bearings on just about any bike, they're going to tell you basically you take the handlebars off, you take the wheel and the brake, you, you pull the uh, forks out of the triple trees. You just disassemble the whole front end. That's a big waste of time as far as Ozark's back roads is concerned. I don't do mine that way. I've done uh, all of my bikes. I service the steering head bearings the same way. Um, it's just a quick down and dirty, uh, easy way to do it. And it doesn't take a lot of time doesn't require disassembling the front end of the bike. So if you're interested in seeing how that's done uh, to service the steering head uh, bearings without uh, pulling the wheel or the forks off, stick around. We'll tear into this uh, CF Moto and see if there's any grease in these steering head bearings. My uh, cables and, and brake hose here that go to the right handle grip, hand grip, run through a wire retainer right here that's uh, fastened to the bottom of the upper triple tree. I'm just going to bend this out a little bit, uh, this retainer. Open it up just a touch and then see if I can run my, uh, see if I can work my cables through it. There we go. And get around it here on the outside. So I'll be able to lay my bars uh, down and uh, get these cables this triple tree has to come off of this, uh, these wire retainer here is uh, attached to the triple tree. So I need my wires out of that. Okay, so I've got the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get that, uh, those set of cables out of that retainer over there. We're ready to take our handlebars off right here. And before I do that, I went ahead and put a little piece of tape on the, on the handlebar just inside of the cap here that holds it on. And I put a piece on the cap also, and I've just marked a line on both of them where the uh, handlebar meets the cap. I, I marked the cap and the handlebar. I did that on both sides. So when I go to put this uh, handlebar back on, all I need to do is line up uh, the mark on the bar with the mark on the cap on both sides. Uh, that will center my handlebar in the caps and also uh, put it back at the same angle so I won't have to mess with everything, readjusting the mirrors and trying to get it all back like it was. It'll be back like it was when I line these marks up. So that's a, that'll save me a lot of, uh, of messing around later on. So we'll go ahead and, and remove these caps or at least loosen them up. So I'm going to hold this bar up and see if I can get this cap off. I don't want to spin the bar, scuff the paint or anything on it. Okay, got that off. I'm going to wrap these bars up with this towel as best I can. Just lift them straight back and let them lay down with the towel wrapped on them so I don't skin the bar up. My bars are just kind of laying in here behind, behind the risers. I'm going to go ahead and bust this nut loose right here, this big uh, steering head, the nut that sits on top of the upper triple tree. It's a 20, I believe that's a 27 millimeter. There it goes. Not very tight. 
I'm just going off the KTM 790 uh, manual on this bike. It's pretty much everything on it. For the most part, all the parts are uh, right off the 790. Now, these risers aren't, but this upper triple tree is. Uh, the same design. For the moment, I've momentarily moved my bars from behind the, the risers here. I've put them in front so I can work below the uh, triple tree right here. And there's a clamp that clamps the, tr the upper triple tree onto the uh, steering head shaft right here. You can see the slit in it. So there's an Allen headed bolt right here. So we'll loosen this up and that will release the uh, that will release this, this clamp onto this uh, steering head shaft here. <clears throat> and I don't believe that bolt needs to come out. I think we can just loosen it off. And that's good enough. So I need to move my bar back behind the uh, risers like I had it before. Okay, I've laid my bars back behind the uh, risers again and kind of routed these cables around the outsides of these fork tubes, around the end of the uh, upper triple clamp. Um, we've got a clamp, a bolt here that where this clamp clamps around this uh, fork tube. We got to remove or loosen it. And I don't think we have to take them out. We just need to loosen these up. So we'll get these loose on both sides. And now I'll go over and do the one on the other side. We've got all of these, uh, the three clamps uh, bolts loose on this upper triple tree. Let's see if we can get it off of there. We do have the ignition uh, switch that is, that is attached to it. So I'm not sure what's going to happen there with the wiring, if this is going to come off easily or... Yeah, it's coming up off of those fork tubes pretty nice. There we go. Now then, now what do we do with it? I went ahead and removed the uh, ignition switch from the bottom of the upper triple tree. The upper triple tree, this went in from below and it just had two cap screws that came in through here and bolted it into the bottom of the triple tree. I just took those out and let this fall off to, just to get it out of the way uh, so I can film in here. The, the triple tree, it would lay over here just fine, but I couldn't get a, a shot with the camera. It was in the way, so I went ahead and took it off. So now that we've got the upper triple tree off, we've got a seal right here. It's just a washer with a seal on the lip, uh, on the edge of it that seals this, uh, the, the outer t t neck here to keep water, moisture, and uh, dirt and stuff from getting down in there. That will just lift right out. We can just pick this right out like so. And this, this exposes our, uh, this is the inner race uh, for the upper bearing here. This is the inner race, this sleeve you see. You can see the ball bearings. Uh, there's a plastic retainer that's holding the bearings, but you can see the bearings below that and there is some grease in there. So what we need to do now, we've got to stop uh, and set the bike up uh, for this operation. This is really important uh, to get the bike stabilized. We're going to drop this stem down, the forks and the stem down, so that the lower bearing will drop out of the lower uh, tube down here, the lower steering head uh, tube. So we'll have access to the lower bearings and then this will come off as well. So uh, we're going to stop and set the bike up now. And uh, this, that's the most uh, important thing about this whole operation is getting the bike set up properly. We're going to look at uh, what we've got going on down here. This is the important part. I've got my scissor lift right underneath the front of the skid plate so I can lift the, the front of the bike up with this scissor lift. And then I've also got a two by four right here in front of this tire. so the uh, forks can't fall out and the wheel go forward and let the forks fall out. It's important to have something in front of that wheel to keep it from doing that. So I'm set up now. What I want to do is raise this front um, 
tire about a quarter inch off the ground. So I'm going to just raise my lift until I feel this tire get loose. There it is. And then take it up about that far. It's about a quarter of an inch. Okay. And now I can start working my uh, steering shaft down through the, uh, the races and, and start letting my, um, my uh, forks and my steering uh, shaft come out the bottom. But I'm going to do it just a little bit at a time. I'll, I'll drop it a quarter of an inch here and that tire will hit the ground. Then I'll raise this another quarter inch and we'll drop it another quarter inch and just work it down. We don't want it to come all the way out. We just want to get it lower uh, to come down enough to expose the lower bearing uh, where I could get grease in it uh, down here that the lower bearing will drop out as we do this. Okay, we can see the shaft coming up through the uh, the race here for the upper bearing, the inner race. I'm going to go ahead and just tap that down and let that uh, that front wheel drop that quarter inch that we have it raised. Just going to give it a little tap here. There it went. It fell down through there and then the, uh, the upper race is now loose. It's off. And then this is our roller bearing in here. So we can take this thing out and grease it. So this bearing sits down in the lower race. You can see it, it's driven into the, the steering uh, head here. It's down here. We'll grease that. We'll pack this bearing full of grease. And then uh, this race right here that runs on this, the upper half of the race right here. Pack all this with grease. But uh, we, we need to do the lower bearing first. That's, what, uh, that's why we've t uh, dropped this down. And that's also, you saw how that fell down. If I didn't have that 2x4 in front of that uh, front tire, that thing could have just fell right out. Just went, the front tire could have rolled forward. This could have went way out. And uh, of course, I got brake lines and, and, uh, and some wires and stuff that are attached uh, to the, the front uh, wheel down there, the lower forks, and it would have jerked all those tight. It wouldn't be a good situation. So the two by four in front of the, uh, the, the front wheel is, is really key here to control this thing and not let it get away from us. Okay, well, we can see in this shot, the lower bearing has came out of the steering uh, column here, the, the tube, the housing, the steering housing. And uh, this is the lower ball bearing. These balls are not retained in this. So when the bearing is out of the race that's driven up in here, um, they can fall out and a couple have. So what I want to do is remove these bearings uh, and then I will clean and then pack this retainer full of grease and the race behind it full of grease. And then I'll put these bearings back in the holes. When they're full of grease, it will hold them in place. And then, then I'll be able to work, work this back up into position. But right now, I've got to be careful and not lose any of my ball bearings. So what I'm going to do is use a, I'm going to use a magnet on a stick. Just a little, uh, a little magnetic extension with a, a, a magnet on the end of it. And I'm going to pick uh, the bearings out with this magnet one at a time. Some of them come out easy and some of them don't. So the balls are coming out one at a time. I'll get all these picked out and then start packing the, the race, the, the upper race that is up in here. I can get my finger up in there, pack that with grease, and then push grease through these holes uh, right here all the way around to get the, the, uh, the other half of the race on the inside full of grease as well. And then I'll just put my balls back in these holes uh, one at a time, spin them around, and uh, put them back in. I couldn't get all the balls out. They didn't want to come out with the magnet, so I just left about half of them in the uh, retainer there, the little nylon holder for those balls. 
What I'm going to do now, I've wiped it all out as best I can. I can't really get behind it, but uh, there's fresh grease in there. I'm going to go ahead and take my wheel bearing grease here on my finger, and I'm just going to start pushing it through the holes in this retainer and shoving it back in, getting it pushed back into the race that's behind it. And I'll just keep working around this race. I'll just go all the way around to the other side, around the back, around the front, and get grease pushed through there all the way around this thing and get this, uh, get that race back there full of grease. So it's gonna be a, a little tedious. It's gonna take a few minutes push that in there but we'll get it we'll get it packed full so I'll just turn this race and, and to where the holes are on the other side and I'll just keep packing grease through them all the way around I made a complete circle shoving grease through these holes in this uh, retainer here where these balls go now I'm just putting the balls back in one at a time so now I'm just taking my ball, putting it on my little magnet on a stick here, putting it right back in the hole that it came out of and pushing it in. And it kind of pops into place. Then I go to the next hole. It's hard to see the holes when they're full of grease like they are, but you can feel them. Push that one in. Just keep turning the... Uh, Turning the bearing around, putting the balls in until I get them all full. The grease will kind of hold them into place. And the retainer also, they kind of snap in. So they shouldn't fall out on you. Uh, after you get grease on them, they should be all right. Main thing is to make sure you get all the balls back in that, that you took out or that came out. And that's my last one right there. So I've got all my balls back in. I'm going to make a circle here and just make sure there's none missing. And get lots of grease on this. Yep, they're all there. I also took my finger and went up in here and packed this, this inner race that's driven in the tube that these run on right here. I got grease in, the, in those as well. So we've got plenty of grease in there. We shouldn't be short for grease. Now I can just do the opposite and start letting the bike down just a little bit and work this stem back up and this bearing back up into place here. So what I'm gonna do is just let the, uh, I'm just gonna let this jack down just a little bit hold this forward so my bearing doesn't hit my balls don't hit going up in here and i'm going to keep letting this down and work this up into place let it down some more wiggle it around and there are all my balls just went up into place i'm letting the bike on down Okay, my jack is not holding the front end anymore. I believe they're in place. I'm going to wiggle it just a little bit. So we've got those back in place. Uh, everything is went back up in there. So now we need to go back up top and work on the upper bearing. So up here on top, we've got our race that's driven into this uh, steering head housing. I went ahead and wiped it out, wiped all the grease out. I'm going to put fresh grease in it now. This is just a, a high pressure, like a wheel bearing grease, a molly type of high pressure grease. I'm just going to get that race full all the way around. So this is my upper up bearing that I pulled out, the ball bearing. The balls are in the little retainer. Now these can pop out, uh, out this way, so you do have to be careful with this and not uh, have the ball pop out and lose a ball. But I'm gonna go ahead now 
and uh, get, get grease on this and kind of push it through the retainer. But now we've got our, uh, our bearings pretty well greased. I'm going to ease, this bearing will go taper side down. You can see the taper in this. And I've got it there. It's, it's where it should be. Okay, so now we need to do the upper race. This is the upper race. This was on here like this. This is how it came off. The ball bearings, the other, this is the other half of the race. The balls run in this semicircular area right here. I'm going to go ahead and grease this uh, where the balls run. So I'll get grease here where these, uh, where the balls are going to run. Then I'm going to put this down. Put it on just like that with the, the curved race area pointing down. We had this, uh, this seal that went on here. You can see how the seal sticks up here off of the edge of it. That, the, the part that sticks up off of the edge goes down, in, down like this. So we just push that down into place. And that's really as far as it goes. It just sits right there. So now we need to try to, to weasel our uh, triple tree back on here. So I'm going to put my ignition switch back in place before I uh, get carried away. Or I won't, uh, I'm going to have a hard time starting the bike with nowhere to put the key. Kind of snug that up and should be pretty good. That wasn't all that tight when I took it off. Now we can work this back under these... Uh, back under these cables they have to go in front like that it all lined up nice went right on there there's a washer that goes on this i about lost it it got tried to get away from me i'm gonna put just a little bit of grease in these threads so i can get a and uh, on this face here where this is going to seat down so I can get a good torque setting. Put just a little bit in the uh, threads. Anti-seize would be a, a, a even better choice. Um, I don't happen to have any right now. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on this where this is going to set. So it'll, I can get a good, a nice, uh, smooth torque setting on this. Okay, so the book says 13 foot-pounds right here. I've got a uh, socket. This is a uh, inch and a quarter, uh, whatever that relates to in millimeters. 32 maybe or something, I'm not sure. 34. So I've got my, my torque uh, wrench set here, and we'll run this down. And it's kind of drawing everything together. It's drawing all the slack out of the bearings. Uh, pulling the stem up, setting the, the, uh, the lower bearing into place. And we're going to feel it tighten up here in just a minute. Kind of when, when the slack bottom, when it bottoms out and all the slack's gone, uh, I'll feel it. Okay, it just hit bottom right there. It just got tight. So now we're going to go ahead and torque it. Okay, so there it's bottomed out. I'm going to pull it down to my torque setting. There it is right there. So the manual says that after you, you torque this down to go ahead and it says to use a rubber mallet. I don't have one, but I've got a block of wood and just kind of lightly tap out here on the upper clamp, on the upper, on the upper triple tree, lightly tap around the tubes just to make sure that everything's down and in place and then after we tap that down it says to go ahead and recheck the torque on this nut and make sure it's still tight and it wasn't it went just a little bit more there we go and then i'm going to repeat i'm going to tap this down again and, and just check it and see if it's still tight Okay, we'll see if we're still set to our torque. 
Yes. Okay, so that's it. The torque is set on those bearings. Now that the torque is set on the bearings, I'm going to go ahead and, and raise the front wheel off the ground just a little bit. And then I'm going to turn this and make sure it's, yeah, nice and smooth. No notchy, no nothing. It's just smooth. I went ahead and put my handlebars on. I lined up my little marks on my tape on the caps and on the bars so I know my bars are centered and they're back up where they were. So that makes that really simple. The last thing I need to do here is to be sure and remember to tighten up the clamps, the upper triple tree where it clamps onto both of the fork tubes here and here, and then on this steering stem here. That, that's what, when you clamp this on, that's what holds the preload and everything on the bearings uh, between the two triple trees. The lower one's clamped onto the fork tubes, and now we're going to clamp this upper one on after we've set the preload here on this on this big nut on the steering stem. I believe these set to about 22 foot-pounds. All of them do, all three of them. So we'll get these tightened up. I'll do this one on the uh, steering stem first. There we go. And then we'll get these uh, these two right here on the ends of these uh, triple on the ends of this triple tree on either end. Get those, and we, we've got this little job whooped. Well, folks, I appreciate you all sticking around, uh, kind of checking out a down and dirty way to to service your uh, steering head bearings. This is the way KTM's uh, will will be. Uh, Husqvarna and Norden, the 901 Norden, and some of their uh, the 701 uh, are going to be the same style as as the KTM. So that's what you can expect if you get into one of those bikes. Um, other bikes are a little different. I have some videos. I'll put the links in the description below. Uh, I've got uh, videos of servicing the Tiger and the V-Strom, uh, the 650 V-Strom. Same procedure, but a different setup on the way you set the preload on the bearings. I'll put the links to those videos below. So unfortunately, it's time for me to go ahead and put the plastics, start putting the plastics back on this bike. Uh, I'm really not looking forward to it, but it's got to be done. I've done all the service up here that I can do right now, so it's time to cover it all back up. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I invite you all to come back and see me. Uh, we'll tear into something else next time or jump on something and go somewhere. Until I catch up with you again, you all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.